walk you through how I sew curves. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the prep, a little bit about the actual sewing, and then also about trimming them. So when you sew curves, it's kind of like anything else in quilting. You can be completely minimalist with your tools or you can kind of branch out a little bit. In the summer sampler blocks, we always will provide a template. So this one is a four and a half by four and a half unfinished template. That means that when you sew this curve into your quilt, it's actually gonna be a four by four inch square. Um, other ones will be smaller and bigger depending on the blocks. So you don't have to buy anything else. I like using the smaller rotary cutter when I cut out my curves. It just kind of hugs the lines a little bit better. But again, you can totally use whatever one you normally use. If you're going to be sewing a lot of curves, I really like acrylic templates. These are made by Jen Carlton Bailey. She um, designed a fantastic curves block for us for the summer sampler a few years ago. And one thing I want to show you is um, I want to show you the actual template, which is going to be the exact same as the actual paper template. Sometimes when people are new to sewing curves, I'm going to move this so you can see, they get worried because the curve does not, like these are not the exact same curve. And that's because blah, 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 math, blah, 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 you need them to look exactly like this. How is that for my scientific explanation? So if you cut out your curve template, don't be concerned if they don't nest. We don't want them to nest, otherwise it would be funky. Now, in both these templates by Jen and also this curved template, um, the paper template, we leave enough room so that you can trim up your curve. Some people are perfect at sewing curves. Other people, especially if you're just beginning, it is not going to be perfect. So I'm gonna show you how we trim those up in the end. Um, you can either use glue, just regular Elmer's glue, um, that's washable or lots of people like um, this sew line. It's just kind of a glue stick um, and you can buy, it's nice because you can buy replacements once you run out. And so you would actually glue based the curves. You would put kind of a line of glue or dots of glue all along here and then you would use it instead of pins. I prefer pins so that's what I'm going to show you. And then the other thing I wanted to say is some people will cut, cut out the curve actually with scissors. So you would actually, you know, grab your pen, your water soluble pen um, and mark around here. And then take your fabric scissors and cut them out. Other people, um, you don't like as many steps like me, this is the wrong one, um, we'll just cut the curve out like this. Um, I'm not sure if there is a right way. If there is a kind of a right way, it's probably not the way I'm doing it. So if you feel better about it, um, looks like I need to change this blade. If you feel better about it, then please cut this out, not with fabric scissors, obviously, and then trace it onto your templates and then use scissors or a rotary cutter to do that. I'm just gonna cut my curve. This is a very dull blade. Hold on. A sharp, larger blade is better than a dull blade. See, the reason I'm doing this is so y'all feel so much better about yourselves when you cut your own. Okay, so we have curve number one, and then we're gonna do the same thing as we get pins stuck into our skin and cut out curve number two. Um, I'm using solids. Obviously, if you are using prints, you would want to make sure that you didn't cut out one like this and, oh, it would probably be fine. If you're using directional fabric, pay attention. Otherwise, you should be. 
directional fabric is so fun, but as always, you have to pay a little bit more attention. Apparently none of my blades are sharp today. And you will just cut up, cut the curve. I, nope, don't have anything to say. I think sometimes, you know, the very first quilt I made, I made with my mother-in-law and with my sister-in-law, at least the first quilt that I did from a pattern. And I remember thinking, oh, I'll do all the cutting because that's the least important part. But it turns out the cutting is important. Um, and it's hard for me to cut on camera. So I might recut that. But anyways, there you go. Okay, so the first thing you are going to do is you are going to fold both of your curved pieces in half and go press them. And that helps you find the exact middle. Then you're going to open them up and you will place the concave piece on top of the convex piece and match up the fold lines and then you will pin. Um, and I like to pin the middle first and then both ends. And if you were doing this with glue, you know, you put your glue on there instead of a pin. If you are doing glue, this is a great chance to um, batch work. So I always, if I'm doing say, the, I think one of the blocks has six curves. So I would cut them all out and then pin them all at the same time. This works as well if you're using glue because then it gives it a second for the glue to dry. I know I use glue, but I'm gonna do a pin too. Not because I need to, but because I want to. Okay. And then some people like to live on the wild side and just do the three pins. Some people like to do lots of pins. Um, you kind of have to kind of massage the curve. And this is the four and a half inch unfinished curve. Generally speaking, I think, you know, larger curves are easier to do than smaller curves, but that is quilting in general, right? It's easier to be precise. Okay, next you would take it over to your machine and um, with the concave piece on top so that you can see the bulk of your fabric, you're gonna do a scant quarter inch seam and you're just going to sew right down here. I do not sew over pins. Um, so I would take this one out as soon as I get to the machine and, um, and then keep going. make sure that it's a scant quarter inch seam which means a little bit less than and I just remove the pins as I go sometimes if it gets a little bunched and you don't want 
create a tuck. You can kind of readjust. The end can get a little bit tricky because the end wants to wants to shift. Uh, the one thing I forgot to say is often we um, reduce our stitch length a little bit. And I go slower than I normally do. And as you can see, the bottom gets kind of funky. So take a second to readjust that. As you can see, I sewed two curves and we are going to press these towards the center. Sometimes I like to start on the back. and then we will press them. So I'm gonna go press both of these. Okay, I'm gonna talk about trimming. Hopefully you'll be able to see with the glare. We are trimming this block to four and a half inches by four and a half inches. And if you notice, it is just over. It's between the four and a half and the four and three quarters. Now, the most important thing to do in this situation is to be consistent with how you trim up all of your blocks. Um, you know, you don't just want to kind of do this and say, oh, whoops, wrong one. You know, do this and say, okay, there's my four and a half, because what will differ is the space between, the, between um, your concave and your convex curves will differ. So what you're trying to achieve is a quarter inch from here to here. So like when I line this up, I'm gonna use a square ruler. When I line this up, I am going to have this intersection between the yellow and the white fabrics be as close as possible to the quarter inch mark. So on that one, it's kind of perfect. On this one, it's not quite so. So you kind of go back and forth, um, until you get that. Now you can see that mine is not perfectly sewn. I'm sure you're shocked. Um, but so you're going to, I'm going to miss like maybe a 16th of an inch down here. That is okay for me because I am more concerned about the distance, um, right there. So I am going to trim this. I'm going to move it first. Um, but I'm going to trim this first. So you can see, the intersection between the concave and the convex blocks are at a quarter, uh, four and a quarter on each one. So I'm gonna trim that and trim that. And then I'm gonna move this. And do the same. And if I was smart for the video, I would have done this with the green block, but didn't, so here we are. I'm going to, you know, take care that it doesn't shift too much. Okay. And there you have it. You have your four and a quarter inch block. I mean, just kidding. You have your four and a half inch block.